Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. So I hope everyone had a great Christmas and a new year and I'm sorry I haven't been posting very much recently, it's because I went to Spain just after Christmas and I only got back a few days ago. So when I went to Spain I took my Star uh, my mini track LX2 Star Tracker with me and it worked pretty well. I got stopped by security at Birmingham airport they, uh, when they x-rayed my bag, they, they picked up the mini track as liquid or something. Um, and that was the only problem I had, which wasn't really a problem. Um, but then, that got me thinking, um, I want to put together a travel rig uh, to take away um, on holidays in this country, and potentially abroad as well. So, I sold the mini track because I wanted something a little bit more hefty. And I got myself a Star Adventurer instead. So in this video, I'm going to do an unboxing and we can talk a little bit about the Star Adventurer. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the bell. let's unbox the Star Adventurer. So let's actually have a look at the packaging first. It's um, quite attractive. It shows a Star Adventurer in front with a DSLR and a nice picture of the Milky Way. And it's, it's not that heavy, which is always a good sign. So, in the box, when you open it, you've got your instruction manual, or destruction manual, as I like to say. have got some nice foam padding. And then we've got the Star Adventurer kit itself. Let's have a look in the box. So, instantly this is recognisable as the Star Adventurer itself. So, put it out. Nicely well packed in there. feels solid and quality and it's not horrendously big yeah I like that we've then got the L bracket I believe gosh well packed ah uh, yes so this is where you can either attach your camera or a small telescope and then that clamps into the Star Adventurer and you can attach the counterweight bar just there. Lily is super interested. We also have a polar illuminator. Now I used to have one of these for my EQ5 Pro because the EQ5 didn't have an inbuilt illuminated polariscope where the HEQ5 and the EQ6R do. It works, like I've used them before, you know, they do feel a little bit flimsy, they're not the best, but it works. For what you want it to do, it, it, it's fine. And we've got a Allen key. We've also got the ball head sort of clamp. So if you don't want to use the L bracket, if you just want to attach like a ball head and a camera, instead of clamping the L bracket in here, you can use this instead. And standard ball head will just screw onto that. You also have a counterweight bar. A nice hefty counterweight. 
as Luna decided to squeak her toy under the camera, I do apologise for that. And finally, the e the Latitude I base they call it. You can buy these separately from Skywasher, but in this pack it came with. And to be honest, the whole thing, apart from that just falling out, because <laughs> it wasn't clamped in, feels really nicely made. There we go. So here we have the Star Adventurer unit. Uh, it's nice and compact. And this one has the new sort of green, white and black um, Skywatcher livery. So let's have a quick look. In here is the poliscope with um, sort of graduated circles. And we also have a battery compartment. And we have the mode dial here. Now I've been told that it's quite easy to um, change this accidentally if you have it in your bag. So always remove the batteries so that you don't drain them. On here we have the uh, switch for direction. So if you're in the northern hemisphere you'd have it switched to north or time lapse. Or if you're in the southern hemisphere you have it south. That may, means the Star Adventure would rotate a different way. And we have a ST4 port for auto guiding and also a mini USB port for power. So I've actually got a Celestron, Celestron Lithium power tank and I shall probably use that to power this. Um, here we have the cap of the polar scope and you would attach the polar illuminator there and this sort of area here is the clutch for the RA so you can see that turning now and then it's all locked down again so just pop that cap back on We also have the Latitude base. This is a 3 8 thread on the bottom. So it fits onto my ball head as normal. And the way I can show that is that that here is a 3 8 thread. And it screws in just fine. Now, a really weird thing that like Skywatcher did, um, they sent the Star Adventurer with a 3 8 to 1 quarter adapter. So, really, this bit is going to attach to the bottom of the Star Adventurer. And here is that, that adapter I was talking about. So they've left it in. So if somebody weren't to know, or just didn't know, they would think that this didn't fit. But all they have to do is remove that adapter and it does fit. that up. But the way you um, adjust the latitude base is you just lock off that, loosen off that, that screw here and then you can turn this one to adjust. And this is for azimuth 2. Lock that down. I mentioned there's two ways you can attach a camera to this. You can either attach it here. This is a one quarter thread. And this is like a fine tuning assembly so that this knob allows you to fine tune the deck um, so that you can point easily at a target. And it's great if you want to use a small refractor. I've actually got one to show you in this video and it's one that I'll be doing a review on at a later date. And if you are using like a little bit of a heavier load you would screw in the counterweight shaft here 
and attach this weight. So I've just weighed it and this is a one kilogram weight, small but perfectly formed. But you don't have to use this fine tuning um, L bracket. You could literally clamp in this adapter instead. So this is a 3 8 thread where you could attach a ball, a ball head. Hard doing this one handed. <laughs> You could clamp that there instead and literally just have a camera and lens attached and then you wouldn't need a counterweight. I forgot to mention this Star Adventure has also got a snap port. So if you've got a compatible DSLR you can you, you can buy a special cable and then control um, the exposures via the snap port but I prefer to use my own intervalometer which I'm used to using so that's not something I am going to be using so I just took all these into the kitchen and got out the kitchen scales and in total with like the L bracket the latitude base the star adventurer and the kilogram weight that comes to about three kilograms. So then I'm planning on attaching a small refractor, which weighs about 1.6 kg. So up to like four and a half kg already. And my camera isn't very heavy, but we might be nearing five kg, which is near the specification of the Star Adventurer. But you know, I know a lot of people use it that way. But my current tripod isn't good enough for that. So I've had to buy a new tripod. Now I'm currently using that tripod to attach my camera for this film. So I'm gonna set up now the Star Adventurer on the tripod and I shall switch to filming on my mobile phone so that you can see what my typical setup might be with my DSLR or with the refractor. So here is the first setup option. So you can see I've got my white Canon 200D attached to a ball head and then the ball head clamp adapter attached to the Star Adventurer and the Latitude Base and my new um, Kenton Faith concept tripod. So to aim you would just loosen off this knob and then you could just point wherever you liked and then you would just set the Star Adventure going and it would track the sky um, depending on what speed you set it to. This is the second configuration. So once again, I've got my DSLR and lens attached, but this time I've got it to the L bracket, which is like the fine tuning. So you could then balance it like a normal equatorial mount. So I've added a counterweight at the bottom to balance out the weight of my camera and lens. On this side, there's a knob to adjust the deck. And obviously this is to adjust the RA as normal. This is probably how I'll, how I'll use my cam uh, Star Adventure in camera most of the time. And finally, this is the small refractor that I'm hoping to use on the Star Adventure. So it's an Altair 60 EDF. I won't go too much into it because I'll be doing a review on it at some point. I'll just say it's the little brother or little sister to my Altair 72 EDF and that is like literally my favourite scope ever. So I'm expecting good things. It also comes with an optical test report. 
But yeah, I'm going to mount this on the Star Adventurer. And there we go. There's the Altair 60 EDF mounted on the Star Adventurer. Obviously here I would either have my DSLR, my um, Astro camera or even a diagonal and eyepiece. And I've got it attached to the L bracket so that I can balance it much better. As you can see, I've had to move that weight down a little bit. And yeah, so that is three different configurations of the Star Adventurer camera and scope. And I'm looking forward to using it, to be honest. So there we have it, the unboxing and quick look at the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. So I know a lot of you out there use them and I would love to hear your experience of, experiences of the Star Adventurer and whether you use it with a camera or telescope or whatever. Even if you've modified it or done other things with it, I, I want to hear it so pop it in the comments below. As always, uh, thanks for watching and Happy New Year again and let's hope that 2020 brings some awesome, awesome things for us all. Bye for now.